Women met us in July 2023, and we want to talk about embodying your awareness, and Haneli will guide us through some processes. Before, as always, a short check-in. And Haneli, you start South Africa. Let's, <laughs> there is winter. <laughs> Yes, I'm I'm good, thank you. I was I was deeply hello Christine. Oh wow. <laughs> um I was recently really surprised by a session I attended um of a film that was made about our superpower, our intuition. And we there was a guest uh, who was one of the people who was part of this documentary. And he's Dr. Mauro Zapatera. And I discovered why, what, from a physicality point of view, so from a biological point of view, what happens in my body when I feel these sensations in my spine. And it was just incredible. And his work is all about how our soul enters the body through our spinal fluid. And his work is just amazing. It's just incredible. So I was really delighted to have discovered him. And I want to do a little bit of study together with him as well, because I was always very curious about this. And it also fits in with what you know we're about to share today as well. So I was delighted about that and many other things. And I'm glad to be here with you and good to see you all, Chris, other Christine as well, again, Gertrude and everyone. It's been a month since we've been together, and I'll pass on to Victoria. Thank you, Hanali. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Um, I let's see, what do I have news to share? It's I'm involved in lots of frivolous things these days. It seems um, <laughs> I um, the our local Harvard club, of which I'm not even a member. Um, suddenly has gone berserk and keeps scheduling events, um, happy hours and um, and film screenings, special films. Um, tomorrow night's a documentary about um, what happened at Harvard in 1968. Um, apparently there was a lot of underground uh, during the Vietnam War, a lot of protests. So that'll be interesting. Um, and, um, and I, yeah, anyway, it's, it's not worthy of, of listing the events, but but it seems like, um, but it's kind of nice. I, I had I had sort of boycotted all those things for decades, but um, it's it's actually a really nice community and I shouldn't have been such a snob because they're they're nice people. And um, and I even, oh, in Oxford and Cambridge have a society too. I like them better. They're more sophisticated. <laughs> And I'm an honorary Oxford and Cambridge person, um, but uh, the, the we we all attended Shakespeare's Twelfth Night at the Old Globe Theater here in San Diego. Um, they have a fest Shakespeare Shakespeare festival every summer, and um, and I was invited to give the preliminary lecture. I think really because Oxford and Cambridge Society found out that it was getting too expensive to hire someone from the education department at the Old Globe. Um, they have a big education outreach. Um, I think they're trying to save money because they, <laughs> they didn't pay me a penny. But um, but what was really nice about it is that since my injury, I don't know if all of you know about that, but um, I haven't been able to play the violin or actually do anything with my right arm for like three months and it's driving me crazy. So um, it was really wonderful just to, even though it was not a professional engagement, I realized how much I really love to do research and to um, to do public t lecturing or whatever. It was just a lot of fun. And um, and I'm going to do it again in August. They're going to do the Merry Wives of Windsor. Um, so that'll be fun. So it's just kind of a, yeah, sort of a break from real life, I guess you could say. <laughs> so good things can come out of bad things because since, since I can't play because of my injury, I'm doing other things. And I will pass it on to Monia. Thank you. Um, it's hot in Vienna. It's too long hot for anything. And it doesn't go below 22 degrees at night. 
So, yeah, but we manage with our ventilation. We don't have air conditioning yet. And yeah, I am trying to read a book I was lured to because it's by Gene Houston, co-sponsored. And I put it in the chat so you can uh, see the title. And I'm really, I don't know, uh, flabbergasted. And I looked at the YouTube clip of this uh, uh, Anneloise Smithman, maybe you know her. And if I had looked at it before, I don't know whether I bought the book, but uh, she's so sure of herself. Uh, so I'm just trying to find out what the consciousness of the universe is, how it is uh, embodied in us. And uh, so I'm very looking forward for Annelies presentation. Otherwise, uh, I was interested in your mentioning about the, the spinal fluid because I'm having several checkups, MRTs and CTs of my uh, spine and my hip because it still acts up and I will know more at the end of this week. Um, yeah. Otherwise, Nothing really upsets me anymore, luckily. So I just surf along and the weather won't change for quite some time. So you have to get used to it. I pass on to Gertrude. Yeah, thank you. Mm, I haven't been here for a while, but this was so like I had an interrail ticket uh, where I was out of the country for several weeks, starting with the integral conference where I met Christine for the very first time. It was really nice. And um, yeah, then different countries, including po uh, Portugal for one week of or 10 days of vacation with our youngest daughter and baby, which just turned one year. So I was like family-wise, business-wise, uh, seminar-wise, I was like from May, end of May, I was on the road all the time. <laughs> so so Mondays mostly was my my travel day and and I I didn't didn't manage to come in and I think I warned you <laughs> a little bit up front yeah and uh, what I was doing also during the time we met not so often was um, I'm I'm now a certified tennis coach <laughs> Uh, tennis, tennis fitness coach. I lost 11 kilos. Um, yeah, my fat percentage went down and I really feel so much more vibrant life. And, and I can really feel the muscles under the, yeah, refusing fat. <laughs> so... Yeah, birthdays and um, yeah, the last big thing was the wedding. I'm I'm really happy to to be here with you again, and it has been a very very how can you vibrant time in between. So, did you, did you speak of the wedding of Tammy? Yeah. Tammy was one of the founding members of, of uh, Women Matters, and she was yeah. here for several years. And then she came over to Netherlands to meet Harry about three years ago, four years ago, I don't remember. 
and now 19, they, 19, 19, yeah. Two years, and now they married. That's very nice, very. Yeah, actually it was uh, Heidi, Tammy and I meeting at the very last event of an appreciative inquiry uh, circle cycle that we uh, started before the IEC in the IEC and in the aftermath to see what comes out of it and women matters is one of the long lasting <laughs> things and that came out of that very last meeting in 2016 I think wasn't it can be, can be yeah. yeah yeah so yeah that's that's me. I could go a lot more into detail, but I <laughs> leave it at that and pass over to Christine West. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, just you know, and it's not too hot here because I live where I get ocean breeze and it's overcast a lot. So. Thankfully, um, it's really just reached the 70s. And sorry, I don't know what that is in centigrade, but it's only reached the 70s in the past week or so here, um, maybe two weeks. But um, yeah, so enjoying the summer, trying to do some fun things uh, with friends. Uh, went to see the musical Six, S-I-X. And uh, that was about Henry the eighth six wives <laughs> and it was really a unique experience the whole show was these six women dancing and singing and giving their song the giving their stories about being the wife of henry the eighth and they told us the audience was going to vote on who had the saddest story like who had the worst marriage to henry the eighth and um that made it funny. And then at the end, they kind of twisted it around and said, why are we competing with each other? You know, and they kind of came to this conclusion that as women, they shouldn't be competing against each other. And that was all baloney. Um, so they ended the, the musical on a really positive note about um, them all having been important in history. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh, Tom and I have a house our first home that we bought when we got married uh we've kept it over the years and have it rented out and um it's time to upkeep as a renter is leaving and hopefully some others move in but it's been i just finished my third weekend and when i say weekend i mean friday saturday and sunday three days of um manual labor which <laughs> i'm not good at uh, painting, sanding, cleaning, uh, staining, all kinds of repairs that have to be done. And hopefully we've only got one or two more weekends left. Tom is a do-it-yourselfer and it drives me a little bit crazy because he doesn't ever consider getting somebody else to do stuff for us. Although we are getting, um, people to install carpet and do some painting of the house, but he repairs everything. And that means I also have to repair everything. <laughs> so I try to encourage him that wouldn't it be great to get somebody, you know, to help with this. But anyway, uh, it's a lot of weekends. It's been a lot of work and my hands are showing the, uh, the, all the chemicals and gloves and things that I've had to, had to wear. But um, yeah, I mean, it's good. We're fortunate to be able to do that. And uh, hopefully it'll be over soon. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, it was wonderful to see Gertrude in uh, Hungary. We, we got in a lot of hugs. So that was, that was a good experience. I loved that. Yeah. So I will uh, turn it over to Christine East. Got my voice? Got it on? Yes. Okay, good. Well, I got in, I just fell into it just when we were 
hearing this incredible conversation about what happens down in the back and the, the fluids in our bodies. Where does that relate to intuition? And it was like, oh my God, is that what we're doing today? <laughs> I was so excited because I'm just having these thrilling experiences of intuition. And then looking back and going, well, it's been going this way your whole life. You just didn't necessarily label it. And I knew, I knew it was there. It was huge, but it's just gotten much bigger. It's almost like, I won't go to do the dishwasher unless I feel intuitively drawn to do that. So that's really what's happening. And therefore, um, I'm just kind of full of surprises. Right now, one of the main things is I'm doing a lot of renovation as well on my property, just because I want to bump it up a little bit. And it's a beautiful time of the year to do that. And it's a gorgeous setup and I want my family in many different places to be able to see it. So I've got a photographer coming in two weeks to use drones and all kinds of things and do photographs of the inside and the out. And so I've set the standard for myself, which is crazy, but it's fun. And God forbid it should be my time to leave. It'll be one of those other things that makes it easier for others. Because I had to change who the executor is in my will for some very sad reasons. And that's just been a huge amount of work. But now it's becoming kind of a joy because I'm looking at all of it with fresh eyes and then comes in the intuition. And I'm not going to say any more than that because I unfortunately have to leave in about six minutes to go to a meeting. So I want, but I wanted to get in here no matter what. So thank you for including me, especially knowing that I haven't been around very much. And um, Heidi and I have had a couple of meetings, which thank God for that, so I felt connected. And I'll pass it on to Heidi, unless she's already had the graceful opportunity to let us know more about her, because I came in late. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice that to see you again, you and Gertrude, which were, you both were rare guests. So even if you have to go away, it's nice to have been yeah. with you a few yeah. minutes. Exactly. Um, it's like, and yeah, I was in Germany for two weeks and had some problems with the Austrian streets uh, where a thing big like this went into my tire and so I couldn't proceed. And uh, But at the end, everything went well and I went to the German integral summer meeting and that was nice and did other personal things and then meet with the family and that was nice too uh, against expectation I have to say because normally I'm not so fond of a lot of family people but I connected quite well and now I'm back for two weeks I had guests and it's it's hot here but Italy is a hot country so I'm used to it and that's what it is. And I'm looking forward. I don't want to talk too much. I'm looking forward to what uh, Haneli is telling us in the next half hour. Okay. okay. Thank you, Heidi. And thank you, Chris, both Christines and Monia and Gertraud and Victoria. It's great to see you again. Last time when we came together, we, we just mentioned about um, sharing about embodying our awareness. And then we decided today, well, I'll just give you a little bit of a ex short experience. So it's not an in-depth experience. I'm not going to talk too much about it. I rather want to lead you through something. What it, what, where it comes from is that we continue to grow and expand and transform. We don't stay the same. And it happens on all different levels, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, energetically. And last time it was great that we just, we spoke about the caterpillar's life and that of the chrysalis and that of the butterflies, very different. So the worlds are very different. And our own visions of ourselves as well is impacted by so many different things. Our conditioning, um, what other people expect from us and project onto us, it, it, everything that we experience every day through our senses impacts our ability to organize our perception, to identify things, 
and to interpret the information that comes in through the sensory in information into our beings, and which gives us an idea of what we are experiencing and better understanding of it. But if we really think about it, so I just want to invite you just to quickly use your imagination and to join me in the world of the caterpillar, just for a moment. And so imagine you are the caterpillar and the seed is laid on the, on the leaf and then it becomes this, this creature. And then the creature eats that same leaf that it was born on. And it keeps on eating, 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 but it frequents the earth. So its world is very different from that of, we think of the butterfly. The butterfly has this lightness of being. It doesn't stay, stay attached to anything. And it explores and shares its beauty and it cross pollinates through its feet. But it's light and it doesn't have any attachments to anything and shares beauty. So its world is very different from that of the caterpillar that just eats, eats, eats. And if you imagine yourself as being the butterfly, you're a creature of the air. It's a different element. And yes, you would frequent the earth as well, but you mostly fly around and your lifespan is actually not very long. But your world looks very different from that of the caterpillar. And once that caterpillar has eaten enough, it starts to spin itself into a chrysalis. And then there's lots of transformation and um, transmutation happening inside of that cocoon. And there it can feel very safe to be there, but at the same time, we are shaken and stirred all the time. So from a personal perspective, when we look at our awareness, it's impacted by everything that we perceive every day. And if we don't have any tools that we can actually discern what we want to keep in our awareness and what not, we will just absorb all the time. But when we think of our awareness, and I want to use the word awakening. So when we become aware of more and more and more of our true selves, the way we've embodied our experiences before that or on our journey would be very different from that moment. And at some stage, our conditioning starts to fall away. And whatever defined us until that moment, so our previous versions of ourselves, and even the blueprint that we came into, into this world, whatever that might have been, so which is impacted by our cultural blueprint, our ancestral blueprints, and the total environment of where humanity is at that given moment, will impact our awareness. And once we are able to come into our true selves and to begin to embody our true being and our true essence, it's a very different experience sensory, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and spiritually. And from an embodiment perspective, we now start to look at the world first in a different way. So it's from a mental point of view, our mindset starts to change. And then we still have this superimposition, or you can call it an overlay of what we were born into, which impacts our experience every day. So when we speak about embodying our awareness is to go on a journey to connect with the energy. So not so much the definition of it, it's an experiential experience. So it's not just conceptual, it's a physical experience through our senses to experience that feeling, that sensation of our awareness of what we perceive the world through every day. And when we begin to embody that on all these different levels, we have a completely different experience from when we only see it, we see it through one, uh, one way. So it's not necessarily congruent to how we feel. And then we go into a space of inner conflict. And the purpose of embodying our awareness is to give us that stability that when things go haywire around us, that we can come back to that feeling, that sensation for all our sensibilities. And it takes us into a state of equilibrium from where we can now move into the world. And it's, I wouldn't call it a state of neutrality because it's not really choosing this or that. It's rather a state of very deep centeredness within ourselves that we can feel in our bodies as well. 
so that whatever happens around ourselves, we can remove ourselves from that temporarily, go into the state of being, and then from there go out into the world again. So we literally change our position. So the position that we look at something, and if we look in terms of perception and perspective, it's two different things. If I look from the perspective of my body out into the world, if I go into a journey into myself, I will experience something very different from when I look through my mind and even through my, my higher awareness. Hence the processes from embodied embodiment of our perception and our awareness so important that we can send shift into this new version of ourselves on all levels. Because otherwise we will always be kept back into something of a prior version of ourselves. So I'd like to invite you to join me on a short journey because of our time to explore what this sensation, this feeling could possibly be. So I'm going to share a short embodied visualization with you. And all you need to do is to just sense into the sensation and the feelings and not to try to give it a label. And when we come out of the, the, the visualization, I'll give you just a few ways of bringing it into the physicality through, this, through connecting with all the elements because of our physicality. Because if we look at air, water, fire, earth, ether, and quintessence, to bring us into that position that we can be really begin to feel and experience it. So what I'm going to share about this topic with you today in this visualization and thereafter is just a short part of it. It's a very small way of just connecting with it. And the invitation is before we start is to just take a moment and you can put off your camera if you wish to. You don't have to leave it on because it's recorded. You're most welcome to do that if you feel so. But to start off with just squeezing your eyes for a moment, like this. And what that does, it just breaks the, my, the, the connection to the mind of our ideas about the topic. And you can squeeze it hard, just for a few moments, just to create that disconnection of all the preconceived ideas, and our opinions, whatever we believe about something, just to break that stream of consciousness, so to speak. And then from there, just to gently focus on your breath. Just become aware of your in and your out breath. However you feel like now, you might be relaxed now in this moment or you might simply be anxious for whatever reason, or excited, or curious, whatever it is, simply just focus on your breath for a few moments. And the invitation is just to keep your eyes closed while we continue from here, just so that you're not distracted from the outside world. And then simply just become aware of your body in this moment and invite your awareness into your body, closer to you, and your perception of yourself. And just notice what that feels like. And maybe you become aware of a sensation or contraction in your body, and simply notice it and let it go. But stay curious. That's the invitation. And also just know that your soul in this moment wants to show you something and to give yourself permission to receive that, whatever that might be, but with your consent. And wherever we will be journeying towards in this visualization that you are safe, and protected. And now the invitation is to take your awareness to the top of your head. 
to your crown. And gently take a journey down your body. So from your crown, your skull, and just relax all your muscles as far as possible. There is nowhere to go to, nothing to do. Just become aware of your journeying through your body. And if you come to a specific aspect of yourself, say hello and be curious and then let go and move on. So traveling from your crown down your eyes, your jaw, relax your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, down to your chest. Take a moment to connect to your heart. And allow your body to become heavy. Let gravity do, do its job. Just let go of all muscles that don't need to be functioning right now. Just relax. Travel downwards to your sacral area, down, down your legs, your knees, down to your feet. Connect to the earth for a moment and relax even more and let go more. Let your body become even more denser, more heavier. You don't need to control your muscles, the ones that you don't reach right now. And then travel back up in your own time to your heart. Gently, slowly. And as you're at your heart, simply listen. Everything starts with a whisper. That melodious voice keeps gradually, slowly penetrating deep into your thoughts. It orders you. Come here, come with me. But where, you wonder, but there is no reply. And this keeps happening and you forget about it until today. That song, that call suddenly sounds more and more clear. The melody is exploding inside your ears. And it becomes almost overwhelming. It's flooding your mind and your being. The rhythm, the bustling, charming, almost infatuating, making you both joyful and a bit tearful. And you cannot refuse its call anymore. You know this voice so well. Come, come here with me. It urges you to be irresistible. Where is that place? You ask again. And this time, your heart wavers as you have the answering side of yourself. You have come a long way. You traveled from far away before arriving at the highest part of the world in this moment, where you can see everything. And you know that your true journey only begins now. You sense everything with your sensibilities and instincts. And then you take the breathtaking tight grip of the wind the moment before your reckless decision, your heart begins to throb like the strength of hundreds of wings struggling to find freedom outside the cage of your physical self until you realize that you need to grow wings on your shoulders to be able to leave here and to move forward. Wait! Don't. 
the weak call from deep inside. Be careful. Are you not afraid? It yells, back up, but without much concern. You keep moving forward. And then, as you look down, there are steps in front of you. And you fearlessly begin to follow them. And you begin to notice that your environment changes. It's like you are traveling into the universe, into another space and time. And you move with ease and much joy and much curiosity. Where are you going? And then you suddenly become aware of a presence in front of you, most glorious. You know this presence so well. You begin to feel sensations in your body that you've never felt before. You don't have a name for them and that doesn't matter. All that's important is to stay present with this presence. It might take on a form or not. It can be very subtle or very vivid. Just take a moment to connect to this presence. This is your I am presence beyond form, time and space. You know this presence very well. You take a moment to take in more, to feel more, to sense more. This presence is not affected by anything that happens on earth in your physicality. It's not affected by the way you were brought up, your path until this moment in time, your environment, external influences, your own inner world. You allow yourself to be embraced by this presence. And as this presence embraces you, that energy is transmitted to your trillions of cells and billions of neurons without having to do anything. And all you need to do is to invite and welcome and allow. There's nothing particular that you have to do, just being. And allowing it to touch and embrace you and unfold you. I mean, take a few moments. to be with that and to gently turn around after thanking that beautiful presence that's you and you notice that the presence comes from behind and embraces you one last moment in time there's a fusion happening Become aware of this merging. And spontaneously, most naturally, you begin to walk back on that path. Into the here and now in your own time. And take a moment 
come back into the space gently, very gently. Just stay with the feeling, the sensations, the memories imprinted on your brain, your body, your mind, your heart. And open your eyes when you are ready. Maybe wiggle your fingers to come back into the space. To bring your awareness back into your physical body. Connect with your breath. And take a moment to take a slow deep breath in. And on your out breath, let, let the out breath be longer. As if you are breathing this energy, not only into your own body and cells and neurons, but also in the space around you. to integrate it into your body you can put your one hand in front of your head and one on your belly button just to center and ground this energy When you're ready, then gently open your eyes. Maybe you just wiggle your shoulders a bit. And when we do this journey, we embody this journey on 12 different levels. Also in a very practical way, practical aspects in our lives and different movements to move through it. For example, arise into it and a flow. Arise into it and a flow, just an example. And another one is to magnetize it. So we draw it to ourselves as if it's outside of ourselves and we root it into the earth through our feet. So we call it to ourselves, that same energy. And we root it through our feet into the soil. Just with the intention by itself, it happens. Another one, I'm just mentioning a few for you, as we don't really have time to do them physically. Another one is to just open up. To soften into and expand our being to this, this energy, this feeling the sensation, the softening and opening up, that it can really truly enter us and percolate and permeate our whole being. Another one that I find also powerful is to be curious, to explore where this me, my awareness, stop and the rest of the world begin and to explore and spread with intention. Not, it can be with, with meaning and purpose, but also simply just naturally through body movement, spreading it. And the more we do some of these, there are lots of them that we, when we do the retreat or the online sessions that we go into, we're really verbing it. We're bringing it into our experience. So it's not only a, con a concept anymore. So the conception and the experiential come together, the spiritual and the physical. And our perception begins to change because it's like we're looking through different eyes. And we begin to open up senses in the back of our bodies. That as humanity, we don't really have names for yet, but we begin, begin aware of these subtle sensations. 
and our, each of us have a different navigation system to for us to embody that and to express it. And it will not stay the same because we're continuously evolving, transforming. Tomorrow morning, we will have very different thoughts than we had this morning when we woke up today. So it's a continuous process, but it's the same energy expressing itself through us. And when we begin to embody it, there's just pure joy in ourselves because that separation was, the way we think about it was caused by our minds because the mind separates. It identifies, classifies, it's thinking linearly. Whereas our higher minds is, is a more holistic view of it all and a more integrated view of it all. So this, I'm just looking at the time and I think um, th this was just really to give you a short taste of it. And yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm complete for now. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think I would like to share a little bit. I'm feeling completely different now. I was in another world while listening to your voice. At a certain moment, it opened up a circle, green circle with all flowers around. That was beautiful. And then it disappeared. And it felt... I have no words. It felt I'm now still in a different state of, of, of consciousness. And I thank you very much. And I give over, this is also my checkout, give over to Christine. Um, thank you, Hanali. That was really nice. It was very calming and soothing and the presence that I connected with was kind of a sense of light, like physical light and robes and love, just kind of a softness with the robes, kind of this flowing material and um, wanted to connect with uh, the physical sensation of love coming from the heart. Um, as well as kind of a sense of being and wanting to express that as, you know, the center of my being. So I found that I was able to both visualize it and have a physical experience of that and felt like that was really lovely. So thank you. And I'll turn over to Monia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Like Heidi said, I'm still in a different kind of state. It was amazing to feel how it expanded and to find myself at the center. Thank you, Hanedi. It was just amazing. <laughs> yeah. I pass on to Victoria. Thank you, Hanali. Um I want more than a taste. <laughs> so um, I hope we can do a longer session sometime. It's really beautiful. Um, I felt, I felt sort of, I don't know, like I was part of the insect world. Um, I, I maybe it was also the introductory part about the caterpillar and the butterfly, and um, I had this sensation of like the the love this sort of being enveloped by love, but it was like, it was like honey. It had this kind of like very sweet and um, sort of nourishing, I don't know. It's hard to explain it. It's, it's, it's hard to put these things into words, I find. But um, I definitely want more than a taste when we get a chance. <laughs> so thank you. And um, yeah, you're the perfect person to convey these things, I think, because your voice is so beautiful. It's really, it's, it's, you can lead us anywhere because we can, your voice has this mellifluous quality that just by itself, I mean, you could read the phone book and we'd still probably have an amazing experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll pass on to Gertrude. Yeah, I, I was somewhere. I didn't have much visual, but it was very like, 
it was not heavy, but but grounded, like, yeah, very, so it was. And yeah, when we finished, I thought I have to re revisit You're frozen, Gertrude. You're frozen. Actions anymore, and I agree with uh, Victoria about your voice. It's really like comforting and slowing down. Yeah. So uh, I was somewhere, <laughs> but I don't know exactly where. Mm, yeah. Thank you. More, please, more. And I hand over to you to say the last words. First of all, I just want to thank you because in this moment I'm sensing and feeling your collective experience and I want to say deep, it's always very sacred for me to do things like this and my ability to feel it so deeply is sacred to me as well. So thank you for allowing me to also sense and experience your collective experience in this way, my body, and for allowing me to guide you and trusting me. Thank you. I'm complete. Yeah, thank you very much. So we should do an appointment where we do only this the whole hour without uh, maybe next time. Yeah. Without big introductions, without uh, too much check-ins, and how long is is a, a, a process normally, Hanneli? Normally, it's ninety minutes. If okay. You really, if you really, if you really want to experience it on a, you know, to bring it together also, that when you're in the state that you can gently enter the back into the world, so to integrate it. 90 minutes is usually, uh, I prefer to two hours, but 90 minutes is. is but we can, we can just agree on a certain Monday where, where yeah. we do that. Yeah. Uh, you would be uh, available to do that with us, to mm -hmm. offer us this. So uh, hopefully next time, otherwise we connect. I hear a strange noise uh, somewhere. Oh, this was a motorcycle oh. outside here. We are coming back to the words with other words. <laughs> okay, you Californians have a good day. You South Africans and Europeans have a good evening. And we see in two weeks. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.